life. Um, it's really good listening to a guy that was just totally absorbed in his sport. It's maybe almost something that we forget in this generation that there were there were guys in the amateur era who were just absolutely dedicated day in day out to their chosen uh, their chosen sport yeah and that's why you know I had this generation of brilliant scottish snooker players and um, i mean i love talking with alec mcmanus he's a, he's, he's a he's a great character and he talks us through as you say that crazy amateur days, you know, when it was just tournament, 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 snooker, snooker hall, snooker hall, snooker hall, all day, all night. Mm. I loved the sport, loved what he was doing. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, he's, he's an amazing character. I'm delighted to launch that new series of The Sporting Life. And no better man to start it with than, than Alan McManus and in, in the week of the... The World Championships. Yeah, it all starts tomorrow down at the Crucible. The, the story about them driving all night to try and get a ferry to the Isle of Wight is uh, one not to be missed. You can get that at BBC Sounds. Tom English, our chief sports writer, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Busy weekend, Scottish Cup semi-finals, always the centrepiece um, of, a, of a weekend like this. We've also got the Scottish Grand National as well that takes place in air. That meeting starts today. Great, Phil, thank you for that. It's half past eight. On digital radio, FM, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sounds, BBC Radio Scotland. News at Sport for the Borders with Graham McGregor. Good morning. More than four years after it was controversially and illegally closed, the TV at Day Centre will reopen today in Hoyk. Campaigners successfully took their fight to the Court of Session where it was ruled that Scottish Borders Council had acted unlawfully in pulling the plug on the service. The authority agreed to the ruling in 2022 and over the past two years has been working towards reinstating the Day Centre. Today, campaigners and officers will mark the reopening of the centre at its new home in Hoyke Community Hospital, ahead of the first service users arriving later this month. A major crime crackdown last weekend by police and partner authorities led to vehicles being seized, drivers issued with prohibition notices and several people charged with drugs and benefit fraud offences. The operation across the borders in Midlothian involved community action team officers along with Rhodes Police, the DVSA, the Department of Work and Pensions and trading standards. Two vehicles were seized for drivers not having insurance. A further 14 drivers were given immediate prohibition notices for their vehicles being unfit for the road and three fines were issued for vehicles being driven while in a dangerous condition. A total of seven people were identified as fraudulently claiming benefits and four men were arrested for outstanding warrants or drugs offences. Police Scotland say they will continue to carry out the multi-agency operations. A crack team of sniffer dogs has helped find a dozen mains water leaks in the border and neighbouring East Lothian. Giancarlo Rinaldi reports. Scottish Water has employed four specially trained dogs to sniff out suspected leaks across the borders in East Lothian. So far, they've found 12 different underground leaks which were in need of repair. Spaniels, Kilo, Denzel and Milo, along with the Labrador Cocker Cross Tico, have been trained by ex-military dog handlers to detect the smell of chlorine in treated water. So far, they've detected leaks in the Ectric Valley, the Hoyk and Jedburgh areas, and a rural area near the village of Hoonham, as well as East Linton. The dogs are provided by Warrington-based company Cape SPC, and Scottish Water say they will continue to use man's best friend for helping in the search for rural water leaks. Plans have been unveiled for a renewable energy park outside Dunn's Fred Olsen Renewable one to erect six 200-metre-high turbines along with a solar panel array and a battery storage facility at the site near Leeds Hill. Uh, consultation events are planned for Dunn's, Gavinton and Southfield at the end of this month. A new £3 million business centre in Hoyke will officially open today on the site of the former Armstrong's department store. While the three-storey state-of-the-art centre is not available for long-term rents, it will act as a regional hub for accelerator training. There's also spaces for uh, drop-in working and conferences as well as having a digital lab and a podcast recording studio. Susan Harkins is Head of Innovations and entrepreneurship at South of Scotland Enterprise. 
taking a, an entrepreneurial um, innovative approach to this which is um, we've established um, some early thinking around this based on what we've been told and, and some and experience um, around the team but actually um, we will listen to, to what's coming through the door we've already done that that's been our approach for the last few years is where we've been maybe running some things and we've been told some you know some courses or programs we take the feedback and we'll adapt that and we've been doing that constantly so yeah this is as you say it's a trial it's for 12 months and already we've been getting some great feedback. So we're now in the television cameras. We'll be at the Green Yards this evening for the opening round of the Super Series Sprint. The Southern Knights host Edinburgh A in the live BBC Alapa match. Kick-off is at 7.45. Tomorrow, the Kings of the Sevens arrive at Mansfield Park. There'll be four pools of three teams vying for the knockout stages. And on Sunday, a similar format will be used at Berwick Sevens. Kelso's Dwayne Patterson is hoping his team can fare better than they did at Melrose last Saturday. Looking to improve on a probably disappointing performance at, at the Green Yards last weekend. Two tough draws this weekend. Heritage are going to be a great side. Berwick are always a, a tough side to play against the seven to keep the ball well. Sunday, down at Berwick, Selkirk and Tyndale, two good teams. We've seen Selkirk last week put in some great performances and we know what Tyndale will bring. There'll be a big physical side with the pace out wide to back it up. So it's going to be a tough weekend in a quest to try and get some points to add to the, to the Kings of the Sevens team. In football, Gallifrey Leading Rovers travel to play Cumbernauld Colts, while Berwick Rangers will see out their campaign at Shieldfield against Albion Rovers. In the East Leagues, Coast team face Newborough Juniors, Tweedmouth Rangers travel to Edinburgh United, and there's a Borders derby as Linton Hotspur welcome Hoyk Well Albert. And finally, in Speedway, high flying Berwick Bandits are on the road tonight as they head to Glasgow Tigers. The tapes go up at 7.30 this evening. Now, with the Borders weather, here's Callum McCall. A chilly morning, especially in the northwesterly wind, with areas of cloud and some showers moving south. Some of those could be on the heavy side, interspersed by some sunny breaks. Into the afternoon, showers will fade and the cloud will break up more widely with sunny spells, highs of 10 to 12 degrees Celsius. This evening, variable cloud and some late brightness, then turning cold overnight with pockets of frost. High pressure will then bring a mostly dry weekend with light winds, but skies filling in with cloud at times, but equally some sunny spells too. BBC Radio Scotland's weather for the borders. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland. The time now, 24 minutes to nine, and you're listening to Friday's Good Morning Scotland today with Graeme Stewart and Laura McKeever. As we've been reporting, it's been confirmed that prescribing children drugs which delay the onset of puberty is being paused in Scotland. The so-called puberty blockers are a hormone treatment used for children who are experiencing gender identity issues. The decision comes a week after the CAS review of gender services south of the border criticised the use of these drugs, concluding the evidence for such medical interventions was remarkably weak. It's been welcomed by the MSP Ash Regan, who's the leader of the Alaba Party at Holyrood, and she joins us now. Good morning to you. Uh, why do you welcome this news? Just explain why. Good morning. Yes, I, I do welcome uh, Dr Cass's review and the final report that's come with that. And also um, that Scotland has said now that they will pause puberty suppressing hormone prescriptions. So that's for new patients in Scotland. Um, and that was announced by Sandyford on their website yesterday. Um, I think in order to retain public trust, we need the government to demonstrate that its decisions are backed by evidence and not by ideology. And as the cash uh, report um, has stated the the evidence that these treatments for use in children are neither safe nor effective so we need to obviously be looking at that very carefully in scotland and how do you respond to those who criticize the the cast report itself and say that actually it didn't draw enough on what what there was available scientifically not just in the uk but but from other countries too well, I think it's fair to say there is um, a lack of data uh, in terms of how patients have been treated. And we have also seen that many of the, st um, some of the studies that had been carried out did not meet the threshold in terms of the standards that would be required. However, I think um, what Dr. Cass's report has done is it has reviewed um, the data that was out there 
that was of sufficient standard of quality and it has come to um, you know, significant conclusions which we must respect in Scotland. 